All right, so the next uh, thing that I want to cover is cleaning up the texture maps that we painted uh, last last week or the week before. Um, the texture painting uh, options and the, the, the stenciling options in Blender are fantastic, but it can be really tough to get into some crevices and you will see still see some errors. Um, so on this render, if I zoom in on the eyes, uh, you can see that there's this white spot right here at the kind of inside corner of the eyes. There's a seam on the lips that shouldn't be there. Um, and then you can see that the neck down is not quite, doesn't quite blend as well as it could. Now, uh, one note about the body texture. Ideally, you would unwrap the body as well and texture paint it either from photo reference or with textured brushes in Photoshop. Find some way to make it look a little bit more natural and believable. That's outside of the scope of this course, just for time constraints, really. Um, so we'll we'll be doing kind of a shortcut around that. Um, but those are the things that I want to address now that I have my texture painted. So if I jump into Photoshop and I open up my color texture that I painted out of Blender, see I've already done a little bit of work, but I'm actually going to redo the, the stuff that I have redone. Um, I want to work on cleaning up some of these areas. So first thing I'm going to look at is the eyes. And this is the, you can see the brush is enormous. Uh, this is the area that I was getting the, the white highlights in the corner of the eyes that I don't want. Uh, so you can, the spot healing brush will work sometimes. Uh, sometimes the, if you do the clone tool, the, the rubber stamp. And forgive me if I butcher some of the tool names. I am not a Photoshop person. Uh, I use it when I have to. But uh, the rubber stamp can work as well for getting a more believable texture. Uh, you don't have to worry about the black areas. If you paint over the black areas, that's perfectly fine. Uh, and actually, if it helps, what you can do is file, uh, place linked, and then navigate to your UV map that you exported in Blender. Place that, confirm it, and then set the mode, the blending mode to multiply. And this is probably the wrong UV map. Or is just in the wrong spot. So let me undo that. Let's try that again. File. Uh, place linked and head UVs place ah it's a different UV export that's why so yeah I, I let's see I should go and I go into edit mode. I'm not entirely sure this is the right version of the blend file for those UVs, but we'll try. So I'll select it, split my view to UV image editor. Okay, and then UVs, export UV layout. We'll call this week 10 uh, underscore UVs and export. And there's an error. Let's try that again. UVs, export UV layout. And we'll go. I know you shouldn't save things to the desktop, but it's a temporary thing. UVs, export. All right. Now, if I jump into Photoshop and file um, place linked and desktop UVs place. Scale it up to there. Okay. Here's my UVs that do actually match. Set the blending mode to multiply and then I can go back to my color map. Actually let's also lock this layer so I don't screw it up. 
Now I go to my color map. And I can see where my actual verts and faces are. And everything inside this point is just going to be black anyway, so it doesn't actually matter what what happens. This isn't part of the mesh, so I could paint it, paint the inside of the eye right here any color, and it would never show up on the mesh because there's no actual geometry there. So you don't really have to worry about that too much. Uh, but you can go in, you can kind of paint in what you need uh, to cover the areas. You can use the healing brush. I uh, just kind of have to be careful with the directionality of it. Uh, I found the healing brush worked really well around the nostrils, just to kind of smooth things out. Um, and I can turn my UVs on again to see kind of what's happening there. I'm not super worried about what the inside of the nostrils look like. I know they're black on the on the texture map, but when they're actually applied to the mesh, that's going to be up inside your nose, there's not going to be any light getting to them anyway, so it's going to look dark. And if you shine a light up your nose, you're going to see skin texture. You're not going to see just black skin. It'd be, at least you shouldn't. Um, it'd be kind of weird. So it's okay if, if you don't have that, those black holes in the middle there. Uh, same thing with uh, around the mouth. You know, I'm just trying to smooth out any really sharp, jagged edges. Uh, and then the other thing that I want to do, uh, aside from spending some time getting the ears cleaned up, uh, which I just did with a big healing brush and then large passes, um, kind of like that. But the other important thing is getting the uh, the head to blend in with the rest of the body. Now if you remember what we did when we unwrapped the head is we took the body UVs and collapsed them down into a single point and just put them down here in the corner. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a brush, pretty uh, fairly large one, uh, I'm going to sample, where is my color picker tool? Again you can see how unfamiliar I am with Photoshop because I can't find the color picker tool. I there we go beautiful I choose a kind of average skin color along the neck and then go back to my brush tool I'm just gonna paint this corner because I know that's where the the body verts are and that'll make the rest of the body that color uh, and then the really important bit is getting the head to blend in to this color so what I'm gonna do is first take my lasso select and I'm going to select kind of this area and then I want to make sure I don't accidentally select other parts of the skin I should probably zoom in okay um, oh there it goes yeah, I actually did a pretty good job let's remove some of this area from the selection So now what I can do is I can I can whoops paint uh, paint this color with a large soft brush so I've got the hardness all the way down to zero and the size is up pretty high and I can just kind of slowly paint just so that the edge starts to kind of blend into that color. I'm not going to go too far into the skin. I just want to try to make a gradual uh, gradual transition from the painted texture to the photo texture. And because I'm using the uh, selection, I won't accidentally paint onto the ears. Okay. And as with all things, the more time you spend with this, the better the transition will look. Um, but that'll be all right. So once I get that, then I can Command Shift Apple S, export it out save it um, as my head color, which I'm not going to because I already did this earlier. And then I can come back into Blender, navigate to the head color map, 
and then hit image and reload image. That'll refresh the image. And then when you render the, uh, hit Shift Z to go into rendered view in Blender, you should see the updated uh, texture. You can see there's no white spots in the eyes. Uh, the nose is a little bit cleaner. So that's the process that I went through uh, to get a cleaner uh, texture map. And actually, if I I will open up my updated texture map so you can see this is what mine ended up looking like. There's still certainly room for improvement, particularly under the chin. Um, but in general, it feels much cleaner. The eyes are cleaner. Um, got rid of a lot of the artifacts around the nose and the corner of the mouth. Uh, and now it gives me something that I'm happy to move forward with.